Welcome to DIY Volts. I'm Seth. I was recently allowed to tour a micro hydro install. This installation was done by an elderly couple that has been living on an off grid property for over 15 years. This hydro is their first power at this location. They actually are so far back in the woods that it's not even possible to get grid power to them at this time. They have a couple of neighbors who also use the same creek for micro hydro power and they decided it was time to do an installation for themselves. Now the equipment seen in this video is from Langston's Alternative Power. I will have a link to his website in the description down below and I will also share my signature solar links so you can pick out equipment from them as well. So uh, this was the first time I'd used my new microphone. There's a couple of times that the audio is a little bit hard to hear, but hopefully I'll be able to uh, get you a good enough uh, information on their system. This is the intake of this hydro system. There is about 200 gallons of water flowing over this stream and it's pulling in about 110 gallons. So there is plenty of water that is escaping the system or continuing down the creek to make sure that all the wildlife has the normal amount of water that it is used to having. In order to direct the water into the Kowanda screen, a small concrete pad has been built to capture the water from these two culvert pipes. The water makes its way down here and then is channeled into a little concrete sluice here and directed over the Kowanda screen. Now the water here is moving pretty quick. A few rocks have been placed right here in front of the stream to slow the water down so that it flows nice and softly into the Kiwanda stream. The Kiwanda box has some air slit up here towards the top, lets any of the air out, and then all of the water is now traveling out of the six inch pin stop right here. There is a little bit of debris that has gotten stuck on here, but you can see that it very quickly is cleaned off you can see coming out of the Kiwanda screen, there is a six inch pipe. It takes a 90 right here and moves down this way. There's one joint right there. And then right down here, there is a fern co fitting that reduces from the six inch pipe down to a four inch pipe. Now the 110 gallons a minute that are flowing in this system can easily be passed through a four inch pipe without too much friction loss. It's important not to have any high spots in your pin stop. So if you were to shoot a grade right here from that Kiwanda stream, the homeowner says there's approximately 15 inches from where it enters in to this portion right down here. They have a clean out, which allows the system to be flushed and return back down to the creek. This also allows a spot for maintenance to occur with this giant four inch ball valve. Now an attempt was made to reduce the air that might be getting into the system, but the problem was there's only about 15 inches of head pressure here and about 50 on the downhill side. So that much, the high pressure was pulling air out of the standpipe. So it is currently locked down. This particular creek can have flood stages with over 700 gallons a minute. And so the homeowner has moved the pipe away from the creek and now it is traveling down over here and will return to the creek after it has gone through the turbines. So as you can see, a little bridge system has been made to allow this pipe to go over this little dip right here without having a spot that then returns back up. So a very simple design, just a couple of cross pieces of wood and then some decking boards up under that to support the weight of this pipe. Now, if I were to get here on the pipe, you could see how it has a constant downhill slope the entire way, all 50 feet of this head pressure. I mentioned before the importance of not having a pipe too small to allow friction loss. And you can see here that exterior pipe couplings are used. These are pressure couplings. And so the inner portion of the pipe still has full flow. If you're using poly pipe, it can be more difficult to find a way to connect these to allow for that full flow of water. For places that would have a dip, you can see a block of wood has been carved out to hold the pipe. 
Now I'm actually hearing a little bit of air running through the pipes right through here. I doubt that'll pick up on camera, but I am hearing a little bit right in there. For those concerned that the creek is dry, you can see there is easily another 100 to 200 gallons of water flowing past at this moment that's not here into the turbine system. The water enters this system through this four inch pipe and then reduces down to three inch, but has a T. There is 10 PSI here on the gauge. That three inch pipe skirts all the way around the unit and has T's that sweep in and reduce down to two inch. Now there are four nozzles on this system. Two of them are 19 millimeter, two of them are 16 millimeter. Basically it's 0.6 and 0.75 inch. And that's what has the nozzles that go in there and hit that uh, pelton wheel that's underneath this uh, spinning PMA. Three phase power comes out of this. As you can see, there are three wires going from over here, and that hooks up to this exterior wire, goes through conduit onto the house. The 10-3 wire is traveling through this conduit to the house. The homeowner had forethought to put a pipe through their concrete slab in preparation for this hydro. And so you can see the conduit comes in right here and then goes into the house. And this prevents any mice or other things from getting into this system. It's a lot quieter. I've now stepped into the house where the electronics are stored. Let's go ahead and take a look at each one of these components so you'll know what they do. The very first component here is this rectifier. This takes those three wires, the three phase AC power, and it converts it down to DC. So you can see on the right here, there are three wires coming in, and on the left, there are only two wires going out. So those wires take the DC power, and it goes down here to a breaker box. That will allow the homeowner to disconnect the power if they need to. From there, the wires go up here into the Midnight Classic 200. This is an MPPT charge controller. Basically, what it will do is take the input volts and amps from the hydro unit outside, and it will find the best position for the speed to allow the best power output here on the unit. So if I zoom in real quick, you can see it's currently uh, locked down at about 57.7 volts and it has 540 watts coming in. Today you can see it's done 7.8 kilowatt hours, which is pretty impressive. The battery is currently charged at 54.1 volts, and it's got around 10 amps coming in. This unit right here will basically control the speed of the hydro unit. If the batteries were full, this unit would allow the turbine to spin up at almost a free spin and it would bring the volts way up and the amps way down. From there, the power goes out back to a breaker, which then does two different things. The first thing is it stores power in these batteries over here. The homeowner has 30.6 kilowatt hours of storage on these lithium iron phosphate batteries. Each battery is connected to a rail, which has one big positive and one big negative over here. And each of these has a jumper. It's kind of a, uh, an ethernet style cable and all of them are able to talk to one another. From there, you have one data cable out, which goes to this over here. This is an eight kilowatt grow watt inverter. The power from the batteries goes to this inverter, which converts the DC power to AC power, which can be used in the home. A DC breaker is found down here so that the batteries can be disconnected from the inverter. The battery is connected down here. You've got your black and red, which are negative and positive. Your data cable goes right here so that the BMS of the batteries can talk to the inverter. Over here, you have the AC output. As you can see, there are three wires, a red, a black, and a white. That means this unit is outputting 240 volts to the house main panel. 
That way the homeowners can put either 240 or 120 circuits into their system and run them just fine on this 8K inverter. This is the main breaker box of the house. And as you can see, the black, red, and white wires that we saw from downstairs are going into the top of the box. One side, let's say the red over here, goes to the right side and the black goes over here to the left. And the center point is this white wire, which means we have 240 coming into this panel and each side has 120 volts. The homeowner has uh, got these staggered and uh, kind of separated the loads from one side to the other of the panel and uh, just wired it up like a normal house would. It's just that the power is coming from hydro to batteries and an inverter instead of main power. I appreciate this couple letting me see their micro hydro system. It seems to be working quite well. Now, you may be asking, why don't they install some solar panels? They actually have uh, mountains and trees on both sides of their house that would prevent them from getting more than about two to three hours of sun in a day. And so they do have some solar panels and they're gonna install them, but it may not be producing near the power that the hydro system is doing for them. Things that I would change on the system, not a lot actually. They're using a decent inverter for the size house they have. They've got the lithium iron phosphate batteries and the turbine seems to have sufficient water to run for the power needs that they have. So I think what they've got is suiting their needs quite well. I'm Seth with the DIY Volts channel and I will see you in the next video.